Good afternoon everyone, Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you all are doing well. Parked here on the side of the highway here. We have left Oregon. Welcome to California. Uh, not my favorite state, but Diana's from here. And uh, there are some cool things in California to explore. If you plan it out and play it right. Uh, yeah, we're gonna head to the Redwoods today and you're gonna come with me. Let's go do California. I'm actually very excited. The weather is perfect here on the coast. We're gonna be taking Highway 101 right through Crescent City and into the Redwood State Forest. Yeah. Well, we're here at our spot, guys. Got a camping slip here at Klamath River RV Park in California, just inside California here in Klamath. We got a nice corner spot here with no neighbors on one side and a nice view of the river out here. On our drive, we came inland uh, quite a bit from the ocean. So now we have the Klamath River. What a glorious day today. We're gonna go out and explore so I planned it this way so that we have two nights here so that we can actually go explore tomorrow and do some stuff today. So we will be here for two nights and we're gonna go do the state park first today and then we're gonna go do other stuff in Klamath later. I did take the Honda Elite off the carrier in the back here in case you wanna scoot around the camp here or I can take it on the road. I actually need to get Diana a helmet that fits her that's more comfortable. I have my half face helmets, but I need to get her a helmet so that she's more comfortable getting used to the scooter a little bit more. Otherwise, we've got Frosty the truck ready to rock and roll. It's gonna take out some camping chairs and the grill, and maybe we'll get food while we're out today. Don't know yet. But we'll get all the cats fed. They'll be comfortable today. It's not gonna be too hot. So they, didn't, they didn't need air conditioning or anything like that, but it takes the stress off us while we're gone knowing all the cats are gonna be good without us, you know? And please tell me you noticed the effort that I just spliced in all four cats in the same shot, <laughs> one after the other. <laughs> Not Yang, because she won't come out and talk to me. She's a mama's girl. But yeah, kittens are doing great. We are, they are really getting used to life on the road and we're happy about that. But you know what, before we go out today, I do want to thank my video sponsor. Thank you ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. This campground does provide some Wi-Fi that's included with our stay, which is kind of nice. But as you know, unsecure public Wi-Fi is kind of sketchy and you got to take it with a grain of salt, right? Thankfully, with ExpressVPN turned on on all of our mobile devices while we're connected here, we know that we're going to be safe. There is no gamble. It's already included in the price of the stay here at the resort, so we just figured, you know what, might as well use it, but we have to feel secure, right? It's super easy. We have it on our laptops, we have it on both of our cell phones, I have it right here on my phone. It's super convenient and easy. Just open the app up. I'm gonna select a state. There's a bunch of stuff to choose from here. I'm gonna get connected, and just like that, we are connected, safe. Because without the security, traveling like this makes us pray for hackers online. In case you don't know, hotels and RV parks like this, they are a huge source of prey for hackers like us to get into our personal data. And ExpressVPN is able to encode and encrypt our data and keep us safe no matter what. ExpressVPN wraps your online activity in an encrypted tunnel that keeps your connection safe and hackers out. I bet you didn't even know this, but whoever owns the Wi-Fi network here can literally log in and see everything we're doing without ExpressVPN turned on. I've even run into a couple times being on the road and logging into public Wi-Fi where there are certain websites that I simply can't access because they're putting in certain blockers that are blocking the sites that I need to use to be able to upload my content and keep my viewers updated. With ExpressVPN, it unlocks all that. Find out how you can get three months free ExpressVPN to keep yourself safe on the road by visiting the link in the video description below or logging into expressvpn.com slash nomadic or clicking on the QR code right there. Just take a picture of it. Get a great deal, guys. You will love it. I've been using it for over four years now. And thank you ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video today. Now let's go get back on the road. Okay, before we go look at some tall trees, why don't we drive through one here in Klamath? Really? I think so. so. There's this twisting, winding road up here. There was a sign that says no RVs or trailers because they're not gonna fit through this tree, but I believe Frosty the truck probably will fit. And look at all the leaves that have already fallen. It is definitely fall time here. We are going straight uphill. 
Oh, yeah. I would not bring an RV up here, even if you did fit. Oh, right there. Ha <laughs> ha, that's great. There's a tree to drive through. Really the tour through tree. That? You can, if you fit. You don't think I'll make it? No. I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it. I don't think I'm no. gonna make it. Crud. <laughs> we didn't make it. <laughs> but we can get out and look at it. <laughs> I actually thought you were gonna do it. It's crazy. <laughs> so we're not the only ones that won't fit. They won't even fit in, the, in their SUV, so we're gonna have to walk through it. That's all right. Yeah, we think there are some trees that we actually can drive through and fit through, but this, this just isn't one of them here. It's a fun photo op though. They got a, a metal sign there and the tour through tree, Klamath, California here. Actually, I think back in the day, I'm talking 12, 13 years ago, this me walking through here was part of one of my intros and it was rainy. Yeah, so a little different. I really want to see if the truck will fit though. I'm going to fold the mirrors in. No, I better not risk it. But you know, one of the neat things about this tree, and I think it's been here a while, is it is, it is still alive and, and, and very, very healthy with green up there, even though they've cut, I would say, 70% of the bottom trunk here for the driveway. And I don't think they're doing these anymore to uh, trees. So once these ones go away, there probably won't be any more. So we're gonna go find more trees like this and like that, that are twice the diameter of the, the truck up there and uh, go check out the state park next. Here, this is the Prairie Creek Redwoods State Park area. It's a long drive, and there are some very big trees along here, guys. Let's go on a little hike here. The Redwoods remind me of uh, back in the 90s for the Nintendo 64 console. There was a game called Cruisin' USA, and one of the last levels is, ooh, the Redwoods! <laughs> and you would drive through the Redwoods and just basically trash your car and, and run into all these huge trees in the middle of the road. And that was my idea of what the Redwoods were like, you know, growing up in Washington State. There's also a strange smell here. Like, like I don't know if it's like cedar, but you know, like when you smell wood, wood shavings and stuff like that, that's what I smell about the, look at these though, that is creepy. So to give you an idea, and I don't know if you can see how red this, this wood is, but also uh, those wood slabs that we got in Ocean Shores, Washington are made out of this same wood, the uh, redwood. This one's had some damage. That's part of its trunk right there that looks like it was caught in a fire or something, but they are massive. Should we hug a redwood tree? Oh. <laughs> so get a load of the difference here. That tree right where my fingertip is, that is a normal sized cedar tree. That's a redwood. <laughs> so uh, just for size comparison, that's not a tiny tree right there. That is a normal sized, fairly large cedar tree that looks pencil thin next to a redwood. We could have brought the kitties out here. We're gonna need to get like a wagon to carry five cats around though. <laughs> crazy, just crazy. We just pulled off the road. There are elk. There are several very large elk with horns grazing here. It's almost like they knew, like look at this sign, danger, wild elk. <laughs> I'm on the other side of the truck. Some females over there with no horns, and then this big guy, look at that. Wow. I have never seen a wild elk in person. That's pretty cool. He's monstrous too. Pretty cool. Now he's giving us a side profile shot. Love it, showing off a little bit there. <laughs> wow. He's gorgeous. He's coming this way too. I think I'm gonna get back in the truck actually. Yeah, I think it might be time to get back in the truck here. These guys are staying a little close. <laughs> oh, he's kind of running. It's over there. 
Okay. Well, we're back here on the 101 off of the Redwood Highway. We're looking for food and we literally hit the first spot possible. It's almost like a tiki bar shack. I love the tiki umbrellas, but no, it's called the Snack Shack here. And they have some burgers and chicken strips and stuff like that. Some comfort food. Hey, not too bad. I got the chicken tendies and they are not tater haters in California after all. So I'm loving that. Diana, what kind of burger did you get? Is that fish or chicken? It's a grilled chicken with onion rings and barbecue sauce. Onion rings on the burger? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think these are California grown chicken tendies. <laughs> Oh, it's laundry time again? Yes, honey. We do more laundry now that we have five kids, huh? <laughs> <laughs> or the more coffee we spill or, or other things that happen. Yeah. <laughs> honey, don't tell uh, I spilled coffee on you twice already. It happens. <laughs> I want to show you guys the collection so far. I actually got three magnets today. I got a banana slug. I got a May the Forest Be With You, Redwoods Magnet, and this one I really love. Redwood National and State Parks Acrylic, three-dimensional with the trees and the river. Also got me a Prairie Creek Redwood State Park patch because that's the actual drive we were on. I forgot to show you in my last video. I got a Goonies patch and a Tillamook patch. I love that it's almost like the mechanic style with the blue trim around it. So still collecting, but once I get these on the board, I mean, we are really running out of room. Now it's like, <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to go back to Tatalan. In fact, the slug is gonna have to go at an angle kind of down like that. My goodness, what a trip. I guess we could just start putting them on the uh, fridge here. All right, well, we are back here at uh, our campground here in Northern California. Today was nice, it was 74 degrees, but it's gonna get in the low 50s tonight. So until we get a little bit farther into California, we are gonna be using the electric heater if we stay at campgrounds like this and my propane furnace for that. Um, we are allowed to have fires here in this part of Northern coastal California, but uh, we could not bring any firewood into California and it's 10 to $12 for a tiny little bundle that's usually four or five up north. So we're just not gonna do it right now. Speaking of the furnace, the propane furnace, we're having a problem with uh, the water heater right now. It's not that it's not working. I mean, there is physically a flame, but it's making a strange sound. And it's not, it's taking a lot longer to heat up. So if I let that go for an hour, it will automatically shut off and be ready. So it does take a very long time to heat the water up. Just a problem I know is on the horizon and needs some more attention later, but for right now it does work eventually. Otherwise inside we got the kitties staying nice and warm near the uh, electric ceramic heater here. Just got to watch it. It does have a, a, a feature in there. If it's tipped over, it will turn off, but you know, there's going to be some new stuff. And then when we set up the Christmas tree later this winter, I'm going to have to teach two new kittens not to mess with all my ornaments. So that'll be fun, but Diana says we're not going to be able to have a Christmas tree. We're going to have a Christmas tree. We're going to have a massive Christmas decoration this winter. Anyways, we're going to stay warm in here, maybe have a little dinner here, and then I'll catch you guys in the morning. We'll go out and explore a little bit more of Klamath, California. Well, good morning, everyone. Guess who woke me up with some eggs and bakey today? Not Skeletor, but Diana. <laughs> Diana made me breakfast. It was so good. And now, We've got the kittens out right now, keeping a close eye on them, but making sure that they know where the RV is and Diana doing some treats, treat training with the, the kitten treats here. So we got Opie here, making, making sure everything is done right. And we're using these uh, kitten treats here. And they are exploring, kind of getting used to knowing that the RV is home right now. So all the smells and little crevices underneath, and they're pretty much staying close. You know, they, they love the grass. Gizmo, do you like the grass? I haven't seen them eat the grass yet, but they love playing in it. You know, it's just kind of a unique experience, something different than it being in the RV. And uh, yeah, we're just keeping a, a close eye on them, letting them have some exploring time here. Bless you. Look at those markings. See, Gizmo's got stripes on his back and then dots 
like spots, like like a bangle on his side, white paws. He's just, he's got such cool colors. And he's gone. <laughs> but yeah, they gotta go explore. They gotta get used to outdoors. Chunks is over here getting mom cuddles and squeezems. Heck yeah, buddy. That's right. Where's your brusher? Where's your baby brusher? Go get him. Yeah. <laughs> they are bonded together for sure. That's awesome. Plan for today, once again, uh, have a little kitten cat break with five cats. You know, we need to get out and have some alone time sometime. So we're gonna take Frosty the pickup truck out and we're gonna go back up north on 101 today and go check out some other stuff uh, here within the Redwoods today. Come on with us. I tell you what, sun shined up plenty here in California. I think California is a sunshine state. Not Florida, duh. The trees mystery here in Klamath, California. And if you look closely, it even says trees of mystery in the shrub work here. <laughs> My kind of place. Green trees, blue skies, and larger than life everything. Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Bo Babe the Blue Ox, named after my uh, blue shed back at Taterland. Oh, look at all these wood carvings out front. It is beautiful here at Trees of Mystery. Paul Bunyan welcomes you to the Trees of Mystery. Paul Bunyan is a 30,000 pound wood carving next to Babe the Blue Ox. Yes, indeed. I just do want to point out that uh, it's not all wood. Paul Bunyan's chest literally has a lot of chest hair. His beard is definitely made of wood, but his chest hair is very fuzzy. <laughs> okay, well, we did just go peek in the gift store just to make sure they had magnets and patches and they do have some really cool stuff. But um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on this attraction here. It's a really old roadside attraction. It's a famous, very popular roadside attraction in California. It's been around for a long time. $30 to go on the trail and the gondola and a couple other things. And a lot has changed, so I'm looking forward to it. And then we'll hit the gift store on the way back out. I feel like we picked a really good day to come up here. <laughs> Spoiled rotten in California. The theme here today is trees, guys. So <laughs> this is the elephant tree here on the trail. So this one dubbed the upside down tree starts over there, goes up, makes a sharp U-turn, comes across, and then lives up here. So that's very strange. Going back over here to where the roots started, it started here at the bottom. And a lot of these redwood trees, they thrive really well with their roots. Their roots will have separate trees that grow out of them. This is also a huge redwood that is laid down here also. And this plaque over here says that this fallen giant sprouted 3,000 years ago. So there is some old growth here. So, hon, after this hike, have, have we earned some tater tots or a beer or something? Yes, definitely. Okay. Ooh. Nature's underwear, or under, underpass, <laughs> underpass. Okay, let's do it. Ooh, I see mushrooms. Look at the shrooms, guys. I severely underestimated the height clearance of that underpass. Okay, okay, let's not do that again. Not just redwoods here either. Here's a cedar tree, 100 to 150 foot. I don't know it by the trunks, but I can look at the green on there and say that is definitely a cedar tree. Huge. What is it about California that breeds all these ginormous trees? Yeah, just this coastal area here. It's weird. And lots of these, the coastal redwoods. This one to be nearly 300 feet tall. Yeah. I was noticing while I was editing the other clips yesterday that these don't actually look red on camera. But Diana, they are red in person, right? Yes. Like they're, they're, it's a very red wood. It's not the Tuma, it's not the Tuma. <laughs> There's a Douglas fir here that's about 120 foot tall. You can't tell by, cause there's no green right here, but Douglas fir, what we prefer is Christmas trees. If you're from the Northwest, those are the, those are the good Christmas trees. They tend to hold on to your massive Christmas ornament collections, ornaments on the branches a little better with a Douglas fir. 
Okay, this is uh, new since I've been here. The Redwood Canopy Trail. And yeah, it looks like we're gonna be climbing up within the Redwoods. Let's do it, let's try it. Ready, hon? And up, up, up we go. It'll all be downhill from here though. It's neat to me that they built this with a lot of like branches and cut woods, you know, from this area. I love it. Oh yeah. And the higher up you go, now they have the net siding so that you don't fall because uh, we're going up pretty high here actually. We'll peek over the edge at the trail that we were just on down there. Way down there and we're still going. May the forest be with you. Yes, I can see. Oh, and it's Yoda too. That's awesome. This is like, I can imagine the Ewoks from The Empire Strikes Back. I know scenes from that part of Star Wars are filmed here. Oh gosh, Diana, there's a bridge. There's a, a redwood bridge. Don't look down, Diana, don't look down. Actually, I kind of want to look down. Oh, it definitely moves. That's creepy. Okay. Take it slow. And no jumping. No jumping. <laughs> wow, this is strange. Well, well, well. We are walking between redwoods. Very cool. You guys know I get motion sickness, and this bridge, there's a lot of movement on this freestanding bridge here. You did it, honey. You did it. Ah, look at all those that keeps going. Okay. Well, I think it's easier with just one person at a time because this thing moves side to side, up and down way more than I was expecting when I looked up here. It looked very solid and I can assure you it's a lot sketchier than you might think. Yeah. Okay, we made it. Your turn. <laughs> and we're suspended up pretty high. What a neat addition to this attraction. This is awesome. It is pretty Not cool. So <laughs> it is very cool. Also, so I've got the camera over on the bridge, which you probably can't tell how much it moves because there's a gimbal on the camera. But I assure you, it moves a lot, the bridge. <laughs> pretty cool. Diana, will you grab my camera on the way back? <laughs> this is like, what, our, our seventh bridge, I think? Yeah. This is our seventh time going across and only right now is it gonna start to weave down again. <laughs> so okay, we're gonna go across this one, then down a level, and then all the way down here to that one, and then start making our way uh, back to where we started. Jeez. Okay, I am not feeling good. I feel like I just went on a monster roller coaster. I have really bad motion sickness, guys. You guys remember when I tried to do a cruise? And when I tried to go on the, oh, that video hasn't aired yet, has it? The airplane video? No. No. <laughs> yeah. and anyways, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad that's over. <laughs> wow, check out this row of trees. It says, this is their temple, vaulted high, and where we pause with reverent eye, with silent tongue and awestruck soul, for here we sense life's proper goal. To be like these, straight, true, and fine, to make our world like theirs a shrine. Sink down, O oh traveler, on your knees. God stands before you in these trees. Look how tall that redwood tree is next to Diana walking next to it. Yeah. That's what I mean about you can't tell how, how thick and juicy these trees are. Okay, we've got the Brotherhood Tree dedicated to the Brotherhood of Man. All races, creeds, colors. It's a 297 foot tree with a diameter of 19 foot, guys. That is not a typo. A 19 foot diameter. Look at Diana standing next to this monster tree. <laughs> that is insanical. Wow. Look at the normal size redwood trees next to it. <laughs> Goodness. You know, I guess sometimes when the sun hits it just right, it does finally look red. They've got some old artifacts of uh, chainsaws here <laughs> and an old hand saw right there. Uh, 
can hear the gondola going up here. Got some more old chainsaws in here. What do we got? A Home Light 360. That's some really old chainsaws. Uh, circa 1950s and 60s in here. Look at the bar on this guy. Uh huh. And some other old saws, hand saws and stuff. You know, maybe part of the reason why redwoods survive so well out here is that uh, this sign says redwood bark is a protector against fire, as it has neither pitch nor resin, and the wood also contains great amounts of water. Redwood is used in buildings as it is impervious to, to disease and insects. So, you know, if you had some redwood slabs that you were going to build inside of a, a moving vehicle, it'd be a good, a good thing. Fire retardant. <laughs> Am I ready? I guess we're gonna do the gondola after all. All right. All right, let's do it. Let's do the gondola here. I'll take the green one. I'll <laughs> take the green one. <laughs> Are you gonna mad at it? Yes. I am. That's See my videos? Oh yeah. What's your name, man? Todd. Todd, nice to meet you, Todd. Nice to you. Nice awesome, to man. You. I love this place. Do we just jump in? Yeah, just step forward. Okay. Hop step right in. The air, the air conditioning's already on for us. Yep. <laughs> Year round, he says. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a nice day. Gondola operator is a subscriber of my channel already here in California, so that's awesome. All right, we're gonna go up to the trees of mystery here. Go. What was that? I already know it speeds up because we saw it. Here it goes. Oh really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I like that it's closed though. It's it like a, feel more secure. it's like one of those ski trams that takes you up to the top of the hill to go skiing, you know? Ooh, bright. Maybe we, we might be able to see the ocean once we get up there too. Got some people going down. Prepare to unload. Yeah, we'll see what kind of views we got up here. Yep, we're on our way up to the observation deck. There's some people getting back in here at the top to go back down. A little bit of fog out in the distance. We shall see. We need a an observation deck bar up here. I agree. With cocktails and margaritas. Oh, that would be amazing. And, key, and a Keystone Light cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, up here, the air feels lighter and and crispier. Some good views here. It says that we're at uh, Ted's Ridge here. And it's funny because they brought picnic tables and stuff like there's food and drinks up here, but there is not. Uh, let's see where Diana's standing over here if we got a view of anything. Oh, there it is. oh Diana found the ocean. Yeah, it is out there. It's a little foggy though. Right where my finger's at is the ocean. I can kind of, let me zoom in. Yeah, you got to kind of look carefully to see the white caps out there, but there, there is ocean. There's ocean. All right, we survived the gondola. It's more me. I'm okay. I'm okay. But it, it scary. it's getting it's easy though. darker on this trail in front of us. See? Because the sun is starting to set over there. It's what, 3.30? Yeah. And it just looks a lot darker. On our way back down to the gift store. I'm going to get a magnet. I'm going to get a sticker. We're going to get some patches. <laughs> <laughs> so we saw the cathedral tree before the gondola. Here we have baby cathedral tree. And it says, we are now taking reservations for wedding when this display is ready 600 years from now. <laughs> All right, and then the trail exit right through the gift store. Actually, before we go into the gift store, one more look at a giant side profile inside of a redwood. And it's telling you how old this redwood is. Of course, you guys know you can count these individual rings one by one, and that's how old you know these trees are. But the middle right here is from the Crusades, 1096. The Magna Carta in 1215. Columbus here in 1492. The Pilgrims in 1620. And Independence in 1776. <laughs> this tree has been around for a while. Pretty cool gift store here. Let's go find the magnets. Okay, they got some wood magnets here. Uh, I'm gonna have to pick one. Yeah, I found some patches. I found some magnets. Um, 
I'll let you know what I pick here later. I'm gonna have to put my magnets away because I found even more cooler ones. Trees of Mystery there, and I threw it on the ground already. The coffee cups, yeah, I'm gonna pick a different one now, actually. I'm tempted, guys. Just, just one cup of coffee. Comically huge. I love that. Or just one, one shot. A giant flask. It'd be hard to conceal. I got some souvenirs. I got uh, I got some cool stuff. I'll show you when we get back to the RV though. We were, we were excited when we got here because across the street from Babe the Blue Ox and Paul Bunyan is the Forest Cafe, but they closed early today here at three o'clock. So we're trying to think if we want to, do we want to go north maybe on what, just keep going? Because we've already come up 10 miles from our campground and Crescent City is north of us. I know I don't want to go south to Eureka. Some bad experiences in, in Eureka. <laughs> we'll talk it over. We'll let you know what we decide. Okay, before we go, I'm going to show you what I got, guys. I got this Trees of Mystery magnet, but it's like ripply, like, like the roof of something. It's very unique. It's kind of hard to see, but I like it because I've never seen anything like it. I got three patches. I got a Redwoods California patch, a Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox Trees of Mystery patch, and because I've always loved it for so long, a U.S. Highway 101 patch. And uh, I'm going to talk Diana into going to Crescent City with me and get some good food. Sound good, hun? She says, let's do it. Yeah, we're on our way to Crescent City, but I have to say, California has spoiled us. We have been very fortunate to have very good luck, lots of sunshine, and lots of really beautiful beaches along the 101 here, guys. And we've got some rock islands out in the distance. Oh my, it's so salty here. It's so salty. California! <laughs> well, we tried a, a, a brewery restaurant in Oregon. We gotta try one in California, Crescent City, right? Yeah. I owe it to you. We'll, we'll go to a winery or something here later, okay? I'll make yeah, it up to you. Deal. All right. We found Sea Quake Brewing here in Crescent City, and uh, it looks like they may have some local beers. Mm -mm. All right. Pretty cool looking spot. Diana got them a mango margarita there. So good. And I went with their flights. I love doing flights, especially if you just don't know their drinks. So this is actually their new one, the Solar Drift. They partnered with uh, Sierra Nevada Brewing here in Crescent City. So I'm gonna try these three and then I might get a pint of something later. I mean, I was excited about the Solar Drift. I don't know if it's gonna be good. It is really good. It'd be, it'd be good in a can too, but they had it on draft, had to try it. We got some orders in too. All right, our foods have arrived with our drink pairings. Diana got the Thai chicken salad. Yes. Thai chicken salad. Wow. And I have been craving pulled pork mac and cheese for a very long time. And that looks ridiculous. I'll just start by throwing the plate on the ground. We're also seated at a table with uh, other other guests. I guess it's more like a like a community setting, like togetherness and stuff like that. Don't steal my mac and cheese. Oh, need pulled pork. There we go. Oh. It's good. Dang, dinner was so good. We've been spoiled here in California. We came over here as the sun is setting over here and uh, there's a lighthouse. But first, like, gosh, it's gorgeous in California. What is going on here? <laughs> it was a foghorn going off behind me and uh, there's a lighthouse up there. See it up there on the hill? I'm wondering if we can get up there. Diana, you want to try to walk up to the lighthouse? Yeah, let's do it. Doesn't look like it's closed or locked. We might be able to get pretty close. We can see it from the outside. Yeah, we don't have to go up inside it. So the tide is going out right now. The sun is blinding, but my goodness, it's also really beautiful. 
It's about to set, I would say about five minutes. That sun is playing in a set over there. We'll go behind this rock. Oh my gosh, my goodness. Everything here is so beautiful. Wow. Maybe I was, maybe I was wrong about California. Maybe I should give California another try. We've been blessed lately. This is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So this is the Battery Point Lighthouse here. A California state landmark built in 1856. My goodness. One of the beers I had at the restaurant was called the Battery Point Hazy IPA. <laughs> wow. Crescent City, California. I'm glad we didn't go south of here towards Eureka. <laughs> the lighthouse, guys. There is a sign on the door that says it's closed. Closed to go inside, but we still get to see it from outside. That's all I wanted. I love all the wooden sea creatures here. I don't see a light lit in the top of the lighthouse right now. That's interesting. Wow, what a wonderful place to watch the sunset. This is just incredible. Diana, isn't this beautiful? Oh my God, this amazing. place is amazing. <laughs> California. Right. It is getting chilly. I'm kind of wishing I had my, my hoodie. Well, it's the next morning. We're all packed up. We gotta check out today. But yesterday and the day before was probably combined the best two days that I've ever spent in the state of California. Just awesome. Anyway, goodbye Klamath River. We're gonna head on a little bit farther down into California for our next video, and we shall see you on the road. Bye guys.